Hey, what's up, good people of YouTube? This is Andrew from Snakeworks. Uh, I was hanging out in my snake room today, thinking about what type of video I could make, and I was about to leave when I decided just to poke through some snakes' cages. And lo and behold, there's an animal back there that had a bunch of poo. I would have missed it if I wasn't hanging out in here for so long. So I'm gonna talk a little bit today about the need to just check your animals, even if you just don't feel like you have the time or more importantly, maybe you make the time to check your animals. Alrighty, so about to leave the snake room and I thought I'd just check in on one of these trick yellow belly leopard things I hatched out and it, it shed and made a mess and, and it, it kind of reminded me of something I'd been thinking about earlier and uh, about how we kind of leave our, it's a happy animal very easy to leave our snakes in what I call a poo prison. Like these animals cannot change their own bedding or whatnot. They're, they're just, you know, depend upon us to take care of them. So I, I started referring to some of these catastrophic events that I found as poo prisons, just kind of a way to make me think a little bit more about like how it's, it's my responsibility to really be on top of this of all these animals care so they're not just sitting in their filth because you know i i didn't feel like i had time or i didn't feel like coming down here so i'm glad that i stopped in here today and was spending just you know 20 minutes kind of hanging out didn't really seem like i had any cleaning to do i've already been in here a couple times today but it's worth it when you get to help an animal out like this and, you know, this thing doesn't have to sit in its filth all night. Okay, put another one in the wind column for snake works for checking and finding that poo. Something else I wanted to talk about is specific care for specific animals. Someone had asked online today about what I had learned this year about husbandry. And I thought about the snake that I had that has like that million view video and how it ended up pooing after I had raised the um, humidity because those other animals got sick eating bad quail, which I'll never feed to any animal again. So I'm gonna switch the camera around. We're gonna pull out this girl in here and talk about the needs of specific animals versus the needs of the many. Alrighty, McRaderson's. So here's that snake that wasn't pooing for like a year and I ended up squeezing those year eights out of her and you know, it went a little bit viral online and I was hesitant to put that video up because I don't want people to think that you're just supposed to do that all the time with your animals. When I had fed quail to a couple other animals, including the, uh, my karma and a T negative, they got really sick off of it and I ended up having to raise the heat and humidity in here. And that's when this animal actually pooped on her own. Like a ton of poo came out of this animal. As you can see now, she's she's pretty fit for a short tail. Feels like there's a little bit of poo or something in there still. And it made me realize like, you know, all, all these short tails and all these other animals in here are under the same conditions because it works for them. But here we go with an animal that it didn't work for. So what do you do when you've got an animal that's got an issue? My, my, sorry, my uh, take on that was like, give it time, it will work itself out. But I think after seeing what happened when I raised the humidity and getting that animal to poo, maybe the real answer is to treat each animal individually. I think if they had an individual care plan, I, I, I would have been able to take care of this animal a lot earlier. She would have pooed. I would have been like squeezing rocks out of her butt for the whole internet to ask what's wrong with it. So yeah, from now on, I'm gonna be taking a lot closer look at what an animal's individual needs are instead of just thinking like, oh, well, it's 90 degrees in here, it's, or sorry, it's about 78 degrees in here, you know, 50% humidity, that's fine for 98% of animals. Kind of, I guess, take a step back and look at the animals it's not fine for, 
because I almost lost a couple animals. I know I'd be concerned about this snake if it hadn't pooed yet. You know, uh, I'm fairly confident that now I can breed this girl next year to the karma that almost died and make some beautiful animals. And here's that karma male that I'll be pairing to the snake you just saw. And I realized I was kind of rambling there, but I think it comes down to that I need to be more aware of what specific animals need. That was the real point of my rambling. For instance, like this animal's never had any sort of issue pooing or shedding or anything like that. And the rest of them don't really either. And I just lost sight of, you know, hey, some animals have more specific needs than others. Yeah, so moving forward, I'm just gonna be taking much more notice of animals if they stop eating instead of just saying like, hey, that's fine. Like this animal doesn't need to eat all the time. Like I'm gonna actually go, you know, take the effort, check the temperature, the, the, the individual humidity, husbandry, whatnot in that unit. Don't just say like, oh, sometimes animals go off feed or oh, you know, sometimes they just take a while to poop. I'm gonna make a effort to be a better keeper for each individual animals in the coming year. And maybe you can too. Well, I hope this helped you out, gave you something to think about. And if you have an animal that's having trouble, Take a second look at it and maybe the answer is right there in your own snake room. Thanks for watching.